research of the regulation of insulin gene expression by DNA methylation. And um, this presentation will be done by Asma, Zahira and myself, Mariam. Um, so the main aim of this paper is to examine and determine the role of DNA methylation in regulation of insulin gene expression. And uh, um, in this particular paper, mouse and uh, human insulin samples were used to help with the research. And in this research paper, the role of DNA methylation is examined in the regulation of mouse and human insulin gene expression. So as we know that insulin is an important component of metabolic control and we also know that insulin gene expression begins early in the embryonic development of the pancreas mass. So it is important to remember that the gene expression is also controlled epigenetically by methylation. So in the mouse genome there are two insulin genes, um, insulin 1 and insulin 2. Insulin 2 has greater structural and functional similarity to mammalian insulin genes. Also, DNA contains a dinucleotide called CPG, where a phosphate holds together the cytosine and guanine. The meseration of cytosine regulates transcription by inhibition and by recruiting the methyl CPG binding proteins. DNA methylation pattern is um, um, is examined as cell differentiate into insulin expressing and um, non um, insulin expressing cells. Okay, now we look at the results. The results for this research paper were separated under four different headings. The first one shown here is the beta specific cell demethylation of insulin gene. Alright, so um, the DNA, the genomic DNA samples from various mouse tissues, including the pancreatic islands, were bisulfate treated and analyzed by methylation-specific PCR, which was followed by sequ sequencing. And this is shown here on the results. <coughs> so firstly, uh, we examined the mouse insulin 2 promoter, and here that revealed that there were three CPG dinucleotide sequences located at positions 414, 182, and 171 base pair, and this is also shown on the results. The sequencing data revealed that the three CPG sites in the insulin 2 promoter are uniquely unmethylated in pancreatic beta cells and in the insulin producing NIT1 beta cell line, but it was predominantly methylated in the other tissues. These results demonstrate that the adult human and mouse insulin gene promoters exhibit a tissue specific pattern of DNA methylation. <clears throat> the insulin promoter in the insulin producing human beta cell fraction is unmethylated, but is predominantly methylated in the beta cell depleted, depleted fraction. Okay, this is the second test that was done in this research paper, and this test was to test whether the methylation affects expression of insulin gene. To start with, a reporter gene was constructed by inserting the human insulin promoter into a plasmid. Also, there were two more mouse insulin constructs that were, were made. One of them um, contained all of the CPG sites and the other contained none of them. Um, also, um, the CAMP responsive element, which is the CRE, um, which is part of the 182 base pair, and this, this was used, and this is required for maximum insulin gene expression. Also, the false glin, which activates adenylate cyclase and increases CAMP levels were also used. Alright, so we therefore tested the effects of combination of high gl glucose and phosphate stimulation in the reporter assays using methylated reporter and mock methylated re reporter. So shown here in figure A, um, there are the reporter plasmids which were each made with CPG sites and was methylate methylated individually and then tested for the effects of gene expression. So of the three sites, only methylation of the CPG sites within the CRE182 was able to independently suppress insulin promoter activity and only by about 50% as seen in 2E. So methylation of the proximal site 171 had no effect on gene expression while methylation of the distal site 414 paradoxically increased expression from the insulin 2 promoter by almost two folds as seen in 2E. 
So this shows that in methylation dependent suppression, there are other mechanisms that are likely present in the cell that cooperate with DNA methylation to turn off the insulin gene. This is the third test that was shown in the research paper. This is to test if methylation indirectly inhibits factors binding to the, to the CAMP responsive element, which is the CRE. Here, we determine if the factors binding to methylated and unmethylated oligonucleotides were able to be displaced. A oligonucleotide is a polynucleotide whose molecules contain a relatively small number of nucleotides. <clears throat> so different concentrations of this oligonucleotide were used. Uh, increasing concentrations of the unlabeled oligonucleotides were allowed to complete with the labeled oligo oligonucleotides for binding. Here, the method that was used was electrophoretic mobility shift assay, or called EMSA, and it's also referred to as a gel shift assay, or a gel mobility shift assay, or a gel retardation assay. <coughs> and this um, this use is a co is common for the affinity electrophoresis technique, which is used to study protein DNA or protein RNA interactions. So basically, this test was used to test the effect of methylation on factors binding to CR CRE site. So here, the, what we used was a double-stranded 24 base pair oli oligomers of the insulin 2 promoter CRE, and these sites were synthesized and methylated in vitro or mock methylated. Okay, so shown here is the results from the shift assay, and basically these results show that both methylated and unmethylated unlabeled oligonucleotides effectively competed with the label probes for factor binding, indicating that the methylation had no effect on factor binding to the insulin 2 CRE in vitro. So according to these results, the methylation-dependent repression of insulin gene expression was not due directly to the inhibition of the trans transcription factor binding. These are the principal findings. Here's the method used to cause bisulfate genomic sequencing. This is used to determine DNA patterns of new dilation. This is where cytosine residues are converted to uracil, but leaves five new cell cytosine residues unaffected. Thus, this introduces changes to DNA sequence that can be observed for further info. Also, mutilation of these sites suppress insulin promoting. To conclude, it has a few main points. The main conclusion is that DNA mutilation has a suppressive effect on gene transcription. Also, demutilation of the insulin gene appears to be an important and potentially rate limiting step in the differentiation of the insulin producing cells from embryonic stem cells. Also, insulin promoter CPG demutilation may play a crucial role in the beta cell maturation and tissue-specific insulin gene expression. These results imply that mutilation-dependent control of insulin gene expression is indirect, possibly involving a higher level of DNA structure, such as nucleotide positioning and chromatin compaction. Um, so we hope you enjoyed our presentation. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye.